Come on, I just feel the word of the Lord welling up right now. I want you to stand on your feet and stretch out your hands to heaven right now. I feel like the Lord is prophesying over this place and over the members of this body. And He's speaking that there's a greater measure of authority coming into your life. And God is going to open doors and He's going to use you to decree some things and shift some things that need to be in place. And God is going to raise up mighty warriors in this place. I sense that there are some people in positions right now that you have not taken the full authority of what God has placed you in. And I felt like this is a season to step up to the plate and swing like you know you're about to make a grand slam. This is your season of authority and it's time to know who you are in Christ. I believe that that word is specifically for this dance team. I, I, I sense back here there was somebody that was, that, was, uh, that was asking the Lord what was next for your life. It's time to step into all that God has. Worship team, it's time to come up higher. Expressions, every, every area. If you say yes to the Lord, the Lord is opening an invitation for authority to reign. For you to open up doors that because God is open before you and all you have to do is step into it and father right now just raise your hands this way right now in the name of jesus we thank you lord for this dance team god and we thank you lord for supernatural understanding god we thank you lord for releasing right now 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 deeper deeper the mysteries of heaven the mysteries of heaven the mysteries of heaven come on we just release the kingdom Release the kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. 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 Though the words tested, the words endured. Shataba. And we just thank you, Lord, for a womb. Being pregnant with the purposes of heaven. Roshata, you've passed the test. Yeba Rabat Shete. You have passed the test. Seba Rodo Rodo Day. Yeah, yeah. It's laid up for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord, for overcomers. Thank you for overcomers. Shoto Mande. All that you have. We thank you for a fresh season. Thank you for a fresh season. Glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory. Woo. glory to the Lamb. If you receive that word and you know that you're supposed to be stepping into greater realms of authority, just say yes to the Lord. Yes, God, we thank you that there's greater realms of authority opening up to us. The Bible says there's an effectual, fervent door open for you. And it's time that we begin to step in to all that God has for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now, we thank you, Father. Yes, God. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spirit of living God. Spirit of living God, have your way. We say yes. We say yes to you, God. Come on, just begin to cry out to the Lord. Ask, ask of the Lord. Deeper, God. Deeper, Lord. Bush, ma, ye. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for deeper revelations. Thank you, Lord, for deeper understanding. Who? Thank you, Lord, for opening up. Opening up revelations. Thank you, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Shadha. Yes, God. Yes, God. I just sense the spirit of prophecy in here. Yeah, Lord, right now. Come on, he's opening up. Opening up. Mm, all that you've been asking for. In the secret times with the Lord, come on, the kingdom of God is breaking open for you. The kingdom of God is available to you. Father, right now, for Jaya, I thank you, Father, 
for your ordered steps right now. And I thank you, Lord, for the heart's cry, Lord. You're giving her the desires of her heart, Lord. Mm. I thank you, Lord. You're taking her into a place of such deep acceptance. Deep, ex so deep acceptance, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Stir it up. Stir it up right now. Yes. 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 You've been prepared. You've been prepared. Your heart's been stirring. Yes, God. Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God, in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now, Father. Thank you, Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord, just move right now. Father, I thank you for bringing clarity. I thank you, Lord, that she's been longing for more of you. And you've been longing for more of her. I thank you, Father, for stirring up the gift of God on the inside right now. And we just say yes, God. We say yes to all that you want, God. And Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for the glory that's resting on her life. God, I thank you for her heart groaning, groaning, God, for more. Oh, Father, I thank you that this is yours. This is hers, Lord. This is all that you've been asking for. The Lord says, I've been preparing you for this day. Father, I thank you right now. Stir up the gift that's on the inside of you. Stir it up and begin to step out. For you're going to see in a short time, the things that you were praying against are going to be closing up. The door's closing from yesterday. And God is opening up today a new door for you. <laughs> the Egyptians that you saw, the Pharaoh that you saw, the armies that you saw that were impenetrable. They were insurmountable. They're being destroyed and swallowed up by the Red Sea. And I thank you, Lord, for today is a day of salvation and deliverance from the Lord, from the hand of the enemy, for the battle belongs to the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for our sister. We thank you, Lord, for the victory. We thank you for the release, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. Stir it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you for your son. Thank you for your son and fresh fire. Thank you, Lord, for your son and fresh fire. Mm. Thank you for your son and fresh fire. There's a fresh fire that's on you, and you don't have to look back again. You don't have to ever look back again. For you know the call that God has placed on your life. And you'll never have to return to yesterday. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus for your son, I seal what you've done today. I seal what you've done today in him. He'll never be the same. He'll never be the same. We just thank you, Lord, for the kingdom being released. Step up. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Step up. You're stepping up. You're stepping up. That's a word for a lot of people right now. They're stepping up. You've been crying out, and the Lord has heard you. Now he's saying, my son, hear me. Hear me, my son. I'm calling unto you for the things that you are called to do. And the Lord has said, I have equipped you. I have called you, and I am going to show you, no. says the Lord. The Lord of hosts is with you. Mm. Mighty warrior, says God. Mm. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Woo. Many warriors in this place, sitting on the sidelines, waiting for God to invite you, but you've been invited by the Lord of hosts. And I believe that this is a season that you step in with what God has given you. Step in with the scepter that's already in your hand. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait another day, but step in to what God has called you into. Begin to utilize what God has gifted you with. Begin to 
because there's already been open doors, but you're always, uh, the, there's been some that have waited for the next season. You're waiting for another door. You're waiting for another prophecy. And God is saying, I have laid before you the plan and I'm waiting to, for you to get to the Jordan so that I can open a new season. And God is, God is when, you, when you cross over uh, the Red Sea, you have to be ready to, in, to go through the wilderness. And even in the wilderness, there's purposes of intimacy in the wilderness wilderness for you there's purposes in the wilderness for intimacy with you and you say you've been going through it let me assure you go through what God gives you with intention go through what God has put you through with great intention because God did not do something by accident but with great purpose He's planned what he's put you in the midst of so that he could get glory and so that he would raise up and prepare the place that he has for you. So right now, Father, I thank you. I thank you for mighty warriors. I thank you, Father, that you've taken us from one season and you prepared us to inhabit this place. God, I thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Woo. Glory to the Lamb. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. Mm. We love you, Jesus. I've been declaring, and I know that it's here, that the Lord is opening up a, a great, um, a great, place for the word of the Lord to live in deeper levels of uh, rhema and timing. See, we can say, we can say things um, generic, but I believe there's going to be clarity, specificity, and timeliness to the words that we begin to speak, because I believe that what God is orchestrating is a people that know the times and the seasons and the heartbeat of their father. And so what God is looking for is for us to step in and begin to work the work that we already have, the anointing that you already have. People are asking for more and people are crying out for more. People are saying, Lord, I want more. And what you need is not more, but you need to use what's already been given because the grace which is given needs to get a measure of testing. And Father, I just released the prophetic gift on Kemi right now. Father, thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Whoa. God, I thank you right now. There's a hunger for more in the people of God, but I'm telling you, God's not looking for you to ask for the next portion. He's looking for you to walk in what you have. He's looking for you to steward what's been given. Instead of looking for the next thing that might make you feel good, he's asking, what have you done with what I've given? And so I feel like the Lord is taking us into a place where we're going to begin to exercise the prophetic gifts. And by, Janu uh, by June, when we have our prophetic conference, we'll be exercised to the point where we're ready to hear the next words. But you have to go. You have to believe. You have to know that you carry the glory in earthen vessels. It's not for you to look at somebody. It, the days of superstar Christianity are over, and it's time to realize what you carry is a gift to everyone you're around. And when you step into a place, super, super Walmart, I don't care where you go. You need to know that you're there with, an, with a purpose besides shopping. You need to know that you're at your job for more than making a dollar. You need to know that what you're there for has, has intention from heaven. And so if you set your mind on the things of heaven, then kingdom of God will be released everywhere you go. And I believe if we begin to exercise that, and I'm glad you shared, Mike, because because ultimately, as we begin to exercise what God has given, God will give us more. It's about it's a principle of stewardship. You know, we ask for things, we ask for more, we say, God, I need more, God, I want more. That's good. It's good to be hungry. But when you're hungry, but you leave everything on your plate. I, I know this because I, I go shopping with all the all the Christian smorgasbordgers. I go to all the conferences. We go smorgasbord here and smorgasbord there and smorgasbord there. And then it's like, it's like eating at one of them restaurants. You know, you, 
You, you eat a little bit of everything, but you waste most of it. And God doesn't want us to be wasteful. He's very intentional about what he's already given. And when we exercise what we already have, we could step in to a greater measure of what is next because it's, it's really our honor to give God everything that he has already given us. So, wow, God's already done so much. I think, um, I think I'm just going to decrease some things and we're just going to do something a little bit different. I know some of you weren't here for the morning service, but it is recorded. Praise the Lord. So um, I think I'm just going to jump down to Lazarus being raised from the dead. And um, Lazarus was one of Jesus' uh, greatest friends. He was, they, were, they were hospitable. Jesus stayed at their house. He had friends at the house. And this is the, this is the thing. We're talking about intimacy, and I really want you to hear me because if you want God to increase in your life, you have to learn to make a place for him. What's that look like? When we talk about intimacy, when we talk about uh, a bridal chamber, when we talk about a place where God can rest, when we talk about setting alone time with God, those are the things that invite God into our lives. And when we make room for God, like Mary and Martha and Lazarus, there's going to be, can you just bring that heat down a little bit on this mic, just a little bit of the game? And so when we make room for Jesus, uh, there's going to be, there's going to be times like it might be good to hear him teach, but you need more from Jesus than a good teaching. Come on, you need more in your life than a good preaching. You need more in life than a little bit of inspiration. This isn't, we don't come to church to be only inspired, even though inspiration's good. We're supposed to provoke each other to jealousy and good works. In other words, look what the Lord has done. I prayed for this man on the streets, and uh, they, he, got, he got saved. I, I prayed for this woman. She got healed. That's, that's supposed to be part of everyday Christianity. That's everyday Christianity. It's not supposed to be like, oh, wow, how'd that happen? No, it's everyday Christianity. It's what we're called to walk in. So as we begin to exercise the gifts, you know, I, I, I knew a, a Bethel student that went to Bethel because they thought Bethel would give them something that they, that they already probably had. Let me, let me just kind of help with some, a facade. A school can't give you what exercising can. A school can't give you what exercising can. You could sit there and go to school about practicing uh, medicine. You could go to school about practicing techniques for lifting. You could go to school and learn all about the different techniques, how not to hurt yourself, how much to lift, what weight class, what, what's, uh, what's the right amount of body fat. You can learn all that stuff and still be as scrawny as the day you started learning. Because ultimately, without exercising, it doesn't matter where you go to school. You're not going to know how to lift the bar. You're not going to know how to exercise the, your spiritual authority. Colleen, did you have something to say? <laughs> Thank you, honey. <laughs> Children, you have been so incredibly patient. I love you, kids. You guys have fun. Thank you, Colleen. Have fun with your class. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I especially love your butterfly your butterfly beret or whatever that thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. So, all right. Now, we're going to just break the story apart, and then we're going to look at how to use it for ourselves, and it, will be, it won't be real long, but I really think I wasn't able to get into this story like I wanted to, and I, and I read the whole thing this morning. It's almost a full chapter, so I'm not going to read it again. But if you're interested and you're taking notes, you can turn to John 11. But it's literally the whole chapter I read this morning. And the goal was to kind of set the stage. And I, I can paraphrase most of it anyway. Um, but, but Jesus is, is walking throughout the towns and finds out that Lazarus is deathly ill. In fact, Jesus, Jesus hears Lazarus is sick. And he hears God say, I want you to stay. Now, first of all, the interesting thing is he wants, 
he wanted to go, but knew God had a bigger plan than just going right then and there. In fact, he breaks it open to his disciples and he says, well, after a few days, he says, well, he's sleeping now. And they said, well, that's good. He's sleeping, getting his rest. You know, the guy was really sick, so I'm glad he's getting his rest. He said, no, he's dead. And then they're like, what? He's dead. What are we going to do? And then Thomas comes up with the uh, epic. Actually, Peter usually gives these kind of awesome quotes. But this time it was Thomas's turn. He says, let's go so that we all can die. And I thought, what a strange statement. And actually, it's a perfect statement because it shows sometimes how out of sync we are with what God's thoughts are when the Holy Spirit is not in part it intertwined in what we're what we're listening to and what we're doing we, the 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 confusion around what do you mean this guy's dead why didn't we leave sooner if we could have helped him and the father's like this is for that that you'd be glorified jesus and so jesus was happy about that but when he goes martha meets him and she's upset with him because he should have came earlier and then he says this quote he says i am the resurrection so first he says says uh he's going to ha- he's going to have resurrection then he says Martha, I don't think you get this. I'll read this part because this is really important. But I know that even now, this is Martha speaking. Whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. And Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection at that last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? And she said, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the son of the living God, which shall come into the world. And when she had said that, she went her way and told Mary secretly, saying the master's come and calls for you. Now, this is very important because Jesus being the resurrection and the life. When we talk about our lives and we talk about our situations, do we still believe that they're resurrectable? Because what happens in life is things start to come, things start to trouble us, things start to get too far, and then we're like, I don't know if this is redeemable. Listen, I know people that, were, that are in ministry today that were divorced for five years. And it's a really awesome story. Husband gets on cocaine and they get divorced and they were gone. They were separated, estranged for five years and they get back together. And people say, well, that's not going to happen for me. Well, they, it certainly can't happen for anybody that doesn't believe. Amen. It happened for Benny Hinn just recently. Yeah. And, uh, and that was awesome because the redeeming nature of God is to show that no matter what the enemy means, for evil in our lives, that he's going to turn it around for good. And if you'll look to maximize those moments where the enemy's after, where the enemy's stolen, if you, if you actually try to maximize those moments, most likely you won't have to repeat those classes. You know, if, if we, if we live lives where we're like, nonchalant well I don't know I didn't know I'd have to go through all this but I'm going to go through no no maximize it so that the devil never wants you to go through something like that again because by the time you get out the power that you get from going through that situation the enemy never will want to put that on you again see there's a lot of different ways to look at things do you you know it, it says that if if the enemy would have known he was crucifying the lord of glory he would have never done that because you don't put somebody innocent in death death had only authority over those who had sinned the wages of sin is death and jesus was sin free but death tried to consume something it wasn't allowed to have death bit death bit the apple (laughs) death bit the wrong apple and death had to give it up. Death gave up authority that it once reigned in. And death had to give up the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And all those things. He led captivity captive, as Pastor George talked about in Ephesians 4. So, so he's the resurrection. He's the life. And he wants us to begin to stir up even things that we think were dead in our lives. He wants us to stir up things that were even feel dead in our lives. 
Impossible situations need to begin to birth again and breathe again because ultimately God is looking. You know what the really neat thing about God is a lot of times we don't know why we had to go through what we had to go through or things and seasons that we once had, but those build us up to the future which God is opening the door for. So he oftentimes puts some foundational things in our life and as he continues, as we continue to develop in who we are in Christ, it begins to open up those, those, um, those next seasons because we've done well in the foundational things. We've done well with what God has established in our lives. So then that basically prepares us for the next season. Amen. So another thing that's really exciting today is we're actually hosting a Baptist church today. Isn't that cool? We have a Baptist church coming in, and actually, uh, you know, I couldn't say no to the guys because they were like, our church is too small, and, you know, your church is just right, and I was like, man, that's so cool. We started in a Baptist church, and we started in a Baptist church fellowship hall for eight months until the pastor got, until the pastor wanted to leave, and then the elders got mad at us. They gave us a weekend. Next weekend is your last weekend. And then we, God opened a door and we got a friend gave us his church for three weeks. And then we believed God for bigger things. And we ended up going to a great facility. And, and this is funny. So uh, I'm glad when God tells me a little bit ahead of time because it feels really good when you have a clue. Because I was like, I remember like it was yesterday. The guy says, ah. Oh, you know, look at this facility. You're, you're kind of outgrowing your facility. And he takes me on a journey. I'm looking at this K through 8 classrooms and, and this, this really nice facility. Uh, and I'm like, wow, this is really nice. And in my mind, expensive. Yeah. Impossible. I mean, I'm like, I mean it's, like, it's like five times the size of what we've been using. And we're paying like next to nothing where we're at. And I'm like. This is not going to happen. Like, I mean, it would be cool if it could happen, but it's just not going to happen. And so I said, well, we'll have to figure out how it can work because I don't really uh, know. Our, our rent where we're at is really good. I think we were paying like $800 or $1,100. That's how awesome this Baptist church was being. I'm talking about a month, guys. A month. $1,100. We started out at $800. They raised it to $1,100. A month. I'm like, this is awesome. We can do this. And then the next thing you know, we go over this. I'm like, this is five times. I don't know what's going to happen. And then I, uh, my wife calls me and she goes, honey, I came to church and the elders came up to me and they said, next weekend's your last service at the Baptist Fellowship Hall, in the Baptist Fellowship Hall. And I just go like, thank you, Lord. Because I realized the door had just opened that I was saying was impossible. Now, God, you're going to have to work it out because that was the way. Like, he was opening the door and then kicking me through. <laughs> like, hey, look, I'm opening a door for you. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to pray for it. It was like, as he's opening, the boot is the, the left foot of fellowship is helping me out the door. So if you've ever been greeted with the left foot of fellowship, that's the uh, exit strategy of the kingdom. So, so Lazarus, Lazarus is, uh, is getting ready to get resurrected, right? And uh, Mary and Martha, and they, they have this dialogue with Jesus. And I think that what I was really sensing in today, because today was about resurrecting love over law. And uh, I feel like that law has really given the church not only a bad name, but the, the law, the legalistic aspect of Christianity has really consumed uh, and took the place of love. Like, this is how things go in church. And let me tell you something. Nothing in love says this is how it goes. There's nothing about love that says this is how this goes. Like, if I do that to my wife, she does not feel loved. If I say, honey, hey, let me tell you something. In my house, this is how it goes. That, that might work, maybe, but when it works, it ain't worth it. How's that? If it works, it ain't always worth it because, like, it's really not about how it goes. It's about what love would want to do and how love would want to present and how love doesn't think of its own way. And so, 
So what happens is when we get disconnected from intimacy, from bedroom encounters with Heavenly Father that wooed us in the first place, that got us in, 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 in like, oh, this so, you're so good, into those kind of relations, relational matters, into that heartfelt encounters. When we get out of that and we start drying up with all the other things that we need to do for church, when we get into all the other uh, busy stuff that church puts on us, we need to make sure that that's still priority. As soon as that loses priority, then people start drying up and they look like they're still on the vine, but they're not anymore on the vine. You know, I don't know if, if you guys can appreciate, but I, I, I definitely have a huge affinity for people that have fallen. And one of the one of the men of God I got to hear right after he got out of jail was named Jim Baker. The, I, was at the, I was at his first preaching ceremony in, um, it was in Adams Mark Hotel in North Carolina with uh, Morningstar. And Jim Baker preached that night for, uh, for Rick Joyner. And Rick Joyner had Jim Baker come out. I'm like, he, no one even knew he was going to be there. So I was freaking out. Like, I get to be at Jim Baker's, Jim Baker's coming out of jail. First message. And this guy preached, and I'll tell you what, you know, I'm a, I'm a little, you know, I, I, I get a little tipsy sometimes. But while this guy preached, I was shaking in my seat uncontrollably. I look like Jessica. I look like Jessica while he's preaching. I'm just like, I can't handle this, and I'm freaking out, and I'm shaking in my seat, and I'm like, this guy has been carrying something. And this is, if you ever check out his book, the first thing he talks about is he got disconnected from the vine. Disconnected from intimacy. Disconnected with the Lord. So you could get caught up, do the same stuff outwardly, but not have the heart connection that keeps you wanting to do the right things in the long run. So in other words, if we could take this in marriage relationship, it would be really easy to talk about because if if what got us together and what my wife and I met and how we fell in love and long talks, even falling asleep on the phone together in the wee hours of the morning, all those things that, that made us want to be married, those are the things that drew us together. And when those things, it, if those things dry up, they have draw, dried up. We've been busy. We lost touch for a week or so and be like, Whoa, this is, and then, then next thing you know, what happens? You get a little cranky with each other. You get cranky with each other because you haven't been spending the time that makes you want to love each other unconditionally. See, without the love part, the law starts to cut and kill. See, the love was, law was made to house the love of God. This is how you do it, but the love makes it done what well. It does it done with the right spirit. So what I'm doing, I'm not doing like, I don't show up to church just because it's the right thing to do. I show up to church like I had a whole weekend of church. I was here every single day of this week. And But the beautiful thing is, all the people I got to love on and, and pray with and, and, and talk to and spend time with, all that because love was first. And then, and then after everybody went home, I got to stay in there for a couple of hours, you know. It was really nice. So we got to keep love as the priority, intimacy with the priority, because God is resurrecting love over law. You, you, you can't have good foundation if love's not first. And I know that sounds very simple, but I've, I've seen, here's how you know when it's, it's kind of waning, when people start worrying about being right over being in relationship. When people start, start wanting to be right over wanting to care for one another. When people don't care about how this cuts you, I just want to make sure that I'm right here. And that kind of whole thinking, uh, I, earlier this morning I talked about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and how they were at, at war with each other about doctrine. You know, it's sad that we can get at war with the truth of the word of God. Like, like where love doesn't sit there and try to figure out who's right and who's wrong. It tries to understand, first of all, the Bible's written in a way to perplex man. Amen. Amen. 
It says, I wrote this so children could understand. But grown men, we don't have a chance. We got to kind of divert back to like, let's make this really simple for me. And then if we get to that place of child, what's a child do? A child doesn't try to reason and calculate and figure out. A child trusts. This going to work out. I don't know. You got two things pulling at me here. I don't know which one exactly. And he says, well, I trust this going to work out. I trust it's really good. I trust that it's all true. I don't know how. But somehow if I get in this car, dad turns the key and he drives us somewhere, we get there. And we get there safe. Kids trust. They don't try to figure it all out. When we get too big for our britches, we start, we start trying to have theological debates and things with Things where we don't really have any business doing. So, so the beauty is that when we, when we ask God to resurrect the love in our hearts, he's going to stir up in each one of us the passion for what's, what's to come. So we already obviously had a, had a diversion here with the prophetic move, and it was really awesome. And I, I really actually invite more of the Holy Spirit to take over and the Holy Spirit to to stir up prophetic words in our church because I, listen, you can say what you want, but if you don't make room for God, he, there's, there, he's not gonna, he's, he very rarely kicks you off your donkey. Yeah. And you wouldn't want that anyway. You know, when he's gotta kick you off your donkey, you've been going the wrong way a long time. And we don't wanna go the wrong way. We wanna be inviting the Holy Spirit to be in the midst of the things that we're doing so that he can open up opportunities for us to flow with him in supernatural ways, supernatural ways of healing, supernatural ways of words of knowledge, supernatural words of the prophetic gifting. And um, I believe that this year we're gonna see an influx of people developing in their, in their callings so that, you, you know, when, when we start to see people coming in, um, like Jamie Galloway, when someone has a gift and, so, and you can actually receive, not just from him having a gift, but you can actually receive impartation from the gift that was given. Benny Hinn once, one of my favorite stories about this impartation stuff is Benny Hinn once was with the old prophet and he was uh, kind of like ordaining his students and he said to this old prophet, he said, I want you to uh, prophesy over these students and the old prophet said, I don't really, I, I, I don't feel led and Benny Hinn put his hand on the, uh, on the old prophet and he began to prophesy over all the students accurate with the detailed word of God because what Benny Hen knew is if I put a demand on your gift, it's your, it's your ability to say yes that actually steps you into the supernatural, not your feelings. Amen. You feeling led has nothing to do with you stepping into an invitation. If, if, if someone that's in authority says, this is where we're going to go, you're not supposed to be seeing if you're led. You're supposed to step out in faith. When Jesus says, Peter, come out of the boat, it's not about, uh, well, I don't know. Let me see if I feel led. Like, just step out. Jesus, if it's you, bid I come. Jesus says, come on. And he says, okay, I'm going to step out of the boat. It sounds crazy. But this is an a invitation that God is inviting you all to. You could say, I don't feel, I don't know if I, if I feel led. Why don't you read the book, 1 Corinthians 12 and then 13, and then 14, and then find out that you're supposed to not only feel led, but you're also earnestly to desire. You're supposed to passionately pursue. You're supposed to be hungry after the things which God has made available to you. Earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially prophecy. So guess what? It's not only God's desire to give them to you. You don't have to feel led, just feel yes. Say yes. Say, God, I want it. I want what you have. And so, um, so I don't know, there's something, something new stirring in that realm. And um, I'm, just, I'm just saying yes to God. I pray that you're all saying yes to God. Because I don't want to be, I'm actually, I've actually been for a long time hungry for a God to do something so supernatural that when people come in, I mean, the last almost four weeks in a row, everybody that comes in here, today somebody else I've been looking for a church for three years and not felt the Holy Spirit like I did today in three years in being in different churches looking for God and I mean to, to me 
to me, that tells you that we're, we're creating the greenhouse where God can be welcome. Where you guys are hungering for the things of God, and it's bringing Holy Spirit in. I mean, the worship team doesn't take the glory. I don't take the glory. I know it's a corporate issue. You guys are part of the issue. You're hungry for God, and he keeps showing up for us. Amen? So I want to congratulate you for your pursuit for that for the presence of God, but the presence of God is supposed to be the foundational place to bring us into the realms of the Holy Spirit where we can step into much deeper things. First of all, we have to ask God for more clarity. We have to ask God for clarity. God, what are you saying? God, give me deeper uh, understanding. What's the timing? Give me more details. Give me, give me accurate information that will really... Uh, stir someone's heart and and begin to pursue God in these areas and so getting back to this story I'll show you how how it works in with the story Jesus goes up to the grave asks that they move the stone and I, this story as I was reading it I realized how much human ingenuity or human thinking is embedded in the story and it's not stuff that we wouldn't ask ourselves which tells you that we really need Holy Spirit. We really need Holy Spirit because there's so many things that are laced in this story of human ingenuity. If you would have came sooner, he wouldn't have died. That's the stuff we say. Well, God, if you would have moved sooner, that wouldn't have failed. God wanted it to fail if it failed and you prayed. God wanted it to happen that way if you prayed and it still went that way. He might not have wanted it, but there might be there's situations in our hearts that need certain things to happen. So here, likewise, Jesus said, um, let's see, I'm going to go in verse. I'm going to go in verse 39. Jesus said, take away the stone. Here's Martha, for example. The sister said to him that uh, that was dead. Lord, by this time, he stinks. If you're King James, he stinketh. And he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, said I not that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Now, first thing she's thinking is, I don't think we're ready for that kind of smell. I don't think we're worried about that, uh, ready for that kind of mess. I don't think we're worried. And, and here's God. Like, you need to learn to trust the Father, and we need to learn to trust the Son Trust the wind of the Holy Spirit and be able to trust uh, the uh, God in each other. That we're like that. That's one of the biggest things that's hindered churches that we don't always trust the God in one another. And I found it this way that we're not actually out to hurt each other as much as uh, as much as the enemy likes twisting things so that they become personal. But. I can guarantee you that if you dug down into it, when somebody has hurt you, you'd find out it was never part of their intention. So, as we continue down, uh, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. And then they took away the stone and the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I knew that you hear me always. But because... Of the people which stand by, I said it, that they would believe that you have sent me. And when thus he had spoken, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And that he was dead, had come forth. He was bound hand and foot with the grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus said to him, loose him and let him go. And the grave clothes completely fell off. Now, this is more than a story. Imagine what just happened. You just saw a man dead four days come out of the ground by the spoken command of the Son of God. And he said to you, greater works than these will you do. There's an invitation from heaven that as we begin to stir up the gifts of God that are on the inside of us, that we begin to believe God for more, that even the impossible begins to say, hmm, maybe. Maybe. Hmm, definitely. We need to get to a place where we say things like, you know, God, I thank you that you hear me and you always hear me. 
Isn't that beautiful? Like, think about Jesus' thoughts and think about Mary's thoughts. Think about Martha's thoughts. Think about the people's thoughts. No one thinks like Jesus, and that's why no one has Jesus' results. If you want Jesus' results, you have to have Jesus' thoughts. Okay, you have to have Jesus' thoughts if you want Jesus' results. We have to begin to think the way that heaven sees matters. Because when we begin to put into practice what Jesus thinks, we begin to walk out his walk. Jesus, God, I thank you that you always hear my thoughts. And then he says, I say this out loud so that they would know you sent me. Well, the cool thing is he also said it so that I would read today and know what was possible. So I would know the heart of the Father and know that this is his desire for me. So as we get ready to close here this afternoon, um, on this resurrection day, he is the resurrection and the life. And there are some things, specifically this afternoon, as it took an interesting turn, I felt there were some interesting things that the Lord had put in people's hearts that you thought were gone and dead. Specifically, I feel like there are some dreams that you kind of were like, I don't know if this is ever going to happen again. I don't know if this is possible ever again. And I know that these dreams have been dead and buried. But here's what I know. God is not a God of the dead, but he's a God of the living. And he wants to stir up hope again. He wants to stir up life again. So we thank you right now, Father. Just everyone stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Now we all know that some things that are in the grave are supposed to be there. But I'm talking to you specifically that you knew that God had done something in your life that was so significant and obvious that it was his will and somehow the enemy got in and turned it around and and tried to break, break your heart and break your faith down and cause you to doubt and cause you to wonder. And here's what I know about God. He's not the author of confusion. It's not his desire to to get your hopes up and then stomp them down. So, Father, right now, I thank you, Lord, for stirring up hunger in your people. And, God, as we together, as we together, Lord, reach out for your heart, God, I pray that you would just begin to restore things. I want to know really quickly who I'm talking to when I talk about something being dead in your life. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? All right. Well, those of you with your hands up. Actually, I don't know why, but God wants to do it a special thing. Everyone that just raised your hands, can you guys come up here? It's not to embarrass you. It's just... Just what I felt like the Lord said to do. Thank you, Lord. We're going to get in a circle here. We're going to pray in a circle. All those that, just the people that raised their hand. Yeah. You guys raised your hands this way. beautiful to look around the circle and know the eyes that I'm looking at, the people that I'm looking at, the people I'm serving are people with great gifts. And God, I just thank you right now for each, each person in this circle that you begin to resurrect and that they come forth. The things that are in each one of them, God, Stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of them. Holy Spirit, come. Minister, move, and shift everything, Lord, that needs shifted in our lives. God, resurrect. 
Roll away the stone. Loose everything that holds them down. No more bondage. Nothing's going to hold you silent. Nothing's going to keep your hands down. Nothing's going to keep your feet from walking where God has called you to be. And so, Father, right now, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that there's nothing going to stop the people in the circle. Lord, we come in agreement right now for our brother on our right and our brother on our left, our sister on our right, our sister on our left. God, we thank you right now for just blessing this time, God. They plead the blood of Jesus right now over every man and woman right now. And we say, God, there shall be no lack. There shall be no sense of hopelessness ever again because we're going to hope in you, God. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus for complete restoration, for complete restoration over all things. And we thank you, Lord, for this mighty group right here. And we thank you, Lord. There's nothing going to stop you. Amen. Just say, there's nothing going to stop me. There's nothing going to stop me in Christ. Yes, God, you are resurrecting life. You are resurrecting love. And I thank you, Father, for stirring up the gift clue on the inside, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for resurrecting life, life. Life, life, life in Jesus' name. God, we thank you. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you that you never take anything away from us. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As I looked around this circle, I just saw dreams that, that have been abandoned. Me being able to see them again. Especially Crystal. I looked at you, Crystal, and those feet are going to get everywhere God called them to go. Yeah, don't let go. For in due season you will reap if you faint not. Come on. <laughs> Look at all the love you got around you. You're bound to succeed. <laughs> God, I thank you. I don't know. I just pray that you get a heart for the people around you. Because when you make other people's dreams succeed... God's going to make your dreams succeed. Amen. 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 Isn't that good? Appreciate you guys. I want you to go all week long, going after God, sharing everywhere you go, that you found the Lord, that He's resurrected your dreams. He's resurrected your love. He's resurrected your peace, your joy. And so, Father, we found all these things in you. Thank you, Lord. As we go, we go in power. Father, I just close right now this service and say, God, as we go, I thank you for sealing us in the blood, yes. sealing us by the Spirit, resurrecting the life that's on the inside. And I thank you, Lord, that as we go, Lord, we go in confidence that we are your children, that you know what we, what we have need of before we ask. And when we ask, God, we know that you're listening. And Father, I thank you, Father. And we pray for the Baptist church that's going to be here tonight to just encounter you yes. with such supernatural revelation, yes, God. Father, let them experience you. Let them experience freedom. Let them yeah. experience your joy. God, we thank you, Lord. Let the supernatural flow. We pray, Lord, you use the pastor, Lord, in such an unprecedented way, God. We pray the river flow. God, we pray, Lord, lives get saved. Life get touched. Lives get delivered. Father, spirit of prophecy just set up people, Lord, for healing, God. And we thank you, Lord, for doing it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for an amazing week full of your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Happy resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. 
So we got a... Tracy says she releases the vacuum cleaners in Jesus' name. Just receive. Thank you. 